Welcome to the Universe Effect, a show by people who think they know everything, but have absolutely no clue what the hell they're talking about. Today's topic is cloning. Alright, so... It, so clones are fun. Yeah. Uh, recently there's been a lot of controversy concerning, like, any kind of cloning or basically any genetic research. And do you, th- do you guys think that it has any real footing, or is it just anti-science propaganda? Every, everybody, you're saying the controversy on cloning, or you're asking if it's anti-science? No, propaganda? no, like not if, if it's or anti-science. If but, it, like the the worries about whether or not we should clone and things like that. Does it have any real footing, and should we actually be worried about it, or is it just kind of old man make up it? Well, well, I think um. Cloning as a whole, we shouldn't really be worried about because it's the advance of like scientific mm-hmm. progress and technology. Mm-hmm. But like maybe specific cloning, like because people could clone animals and then use them for like bad purposes. Like they could clone animals specifically to to like like say we see we uh, we found an animal. Mm-hmm. Right, and it was like it had like a certain property about it, like its skin or something was like fireproof, and we're like, "Whoa, fireproof skin! That's the cutest thing I've ever seen." So we just cloned a bunch of them, Mm -hmm. and just so we could like immediately just kill them for their skin. Like, is is that cruel, or is is that like natural? We do it. Like, is is that something we do like farm animals? We already that. Yeah, we already kind of do it. Would that be considered? Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie The Island? Like... Yeah. The what? The Island. It's about... I think... is might have George no. Clooney. I don't know. One... Some famous guy. So, basically the movie revolves around... There's a society of people. And every so often... One of the, the people on the island is taken away. And no one knows why. And so, I guess, like, eventually it turns out that they're all just clones that are being harvested for their organs whenever uh, the original needs a, a copy of something. So... Oh my god. Kind of get into some... So it's just, it's just, it's an island full of clones. Mm-hmm. That are just... And every time the clone gets taken away, it's when the original needs them to do something. Needs, like, an organ. Them, and then their mind just gets brainwashed at the end of it. Yeah. Like, they're, they're killed, and their organs are harvested to be used in the original. If, like, let's say someone got into a car accident and they needed a new organ, they just harvest it from one of the clones. Oh my god. I mean, we kind of do this today, because... Mm-hmm. They do that in China, don't they? They, like, they kill prisoners in order yeah. to use them for organ harvesting? Mm-hmm. Well, We're talking oh my god. about, like, specifically humans here, like, uh... Are we, are we... No, because, like, animals, we already do that. Like, we do that with pig organs. Yeah. We, like, we do it with everything that we eat. I mean, yeah, the food industry, the meat industry, we we breed things, which is almost the same as... Like, it's similar to cloning. Mm-hmm. We, and, like, we harvest them yeah. once we're done cloning them. It's the same thing. So, the question like, isn't, should we do this to harvest their organs? The we question already is... Do. Should we do this because cloning is bad, or or if cloning is good? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Paul. So you know how I was, I was talking to so Timmy, I was talking to John Paul last night mm-hmm. about this like theory I have on cloning. I'll come back to that in a bit because it relates. But I'd I'd like to talk about more about like the ethics of cloning. Like, is cloning a good idea? I think it is, yeah. at least partially, for like conservation efforts and stuff. Like an endangered species, we could clone it. Sure, that would, as of yet, cloning doesn't really serve a purpose in saving endangered species because they're not 
it like decreases genetic diversity, which will end up with the species dying out anyway. Yeah. But if we could figure out how to slightly alter a genome so it's not like a pure clone, mm. and then introduce that into the environment, I think I think that would have a good impact on a species. I think. Chance of survival. I or think possibly, if we want to save a species, maybe what we should do instead of cloning the a similar species with um another animal maybe mm -hmm. we should use something like a synthetic womb and i know we like a synthetic womb mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah uh we've talked about this before that actually that goes back to my theory like john paul said like uh that's the stuff we were talking about last night so timmy you want me to explain that yeah and... yeah what's your theory so keep in mind mm -hmm. i have absolutely no clue what the hell i'm talking about <laughs> But I was, I was thinking this, because remember, so have you ever heard of, like, an Irish wolfhound? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, back in, like, the 1800s, there were, like, barely any Irish wolfhounds left. Mm -hmm. They were, like, almost extinct, and everyone was like, no, because everybody loves Irish wolfhounds. They're, like, big and fluffy, and they're awesome. So this one dude, I think his name was, like, Oliver Cromwell or something, he sees, like, the dying wolfhounds, and he wants to save the dog breed. So he breeds them with, with similar dogs, like uh, Great Danes and like other large dogs like that. Yeah. And he breeds them. And the offspring that have the most wolfhound-like traits, he breeds them again until he has a dog that looks like a wolfhound, acts like a wolfhound. And then that's our dog breed today. That's what we call the Irish wolfhound today. Mm -hmm. Which So the Irish wolfhound today isn't really like a... Irish wolfhound. It looks like an wolfhound, it acts like a wolfhound, a so we call it a wolfhound. Yeah, it's just closely related. It's it's like really closely related. So it's like it's like a mock wolfhound <laughs> we made. Because a non there's not actually wolfhound. even a lot of wolfhound DNA in it to begin with. Yeah. Because like it's there's a lot of other dogs in it that make it look the way it does. So really it has like very tiny amounts of wolfhound DNA. So mm. it's really not even Irish wolfhound at all. Yeah, so it, it has a little bit, but not really at all. It's, so it's basically like a mock one that we that we made to like emulate what a wolfhound was. Yeah, so it's kind of similar to like taking a, a genome and filling in the missing spots with uh, similar DNA. Like if you're to use a dinosaur, you just fill it in with like uh, from like in Jurassic Park they used frog. That DNA. actually relates. So like, so like I brought I brought the wolfhound because mm -hmm. it's. It's pretty much the like exact same as the old wolfhound from the 1800s, except it's kind of a different animal. It has different genes, but it still looks and acts and behaves like a wolfhound, right. so we call it one. So, Timmy, remember when you and I, uh, JP, I think we were there, we had that argument about Jurassic Park, <laughs> and you were all against it because... Uh, well, let's get some. They clear. don't have feathers. I they should have feathers. play the devil's advocate a lot because I think that's a great way to um, find out both sides of the argument, so you can mm -hmm. other um, pers kinda other perspectives decide. Yeah, J, J. P. You're a devil up here. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's your role. So I'd like to say something about the wolfhound, the, the, the Irish wolfhound. wolfhound. Yes. Okay. Before we move on, let's go back to the wolfhound and what is, what is your opinion on yeah, that? Yeah. So today. We've noticed that there are a lot of like issues, physically, health-wise, mm. with the Irish mm -hmm. Wolfhound. Um, there are. Yeah. There, well, there any any purebred like, dog, that? they have like a life issues. expectancy well, like, of six any, years. Any large dog breed too has a lot of right, but the health Wolfhound issues. like Great Danes yeah. only lives to like eight, and that was one of the dogs that makes up the Wolfhound. Right, but um, I'd like to say that we've also like encountered this. When we when we cloned mm. the sheep or whatever Dolly or yeah, whatever. Yeah, Dolly the sheep. Yeah. So anything so far that we've really cloned, aside from like plants and bacteria, mm. has has had some health risks. Like well, the Pyrene and Ibex. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that only lived a couple seconds. Yes. But um, that was sad. It was it was it was it was like in the womb of a Spanish Ibex. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So with the um uh. Dolly the sheep. When you clone an animal, the cells that you take are already 
like adult cells and they're not sex cells or anything. They're like normal so you, cells so from an adult need animal. Embryotic cells? Or young cells. Because, uh, have you seen. I watched, a, I think it was. I don't remember. It might have been Veritasium did a video on the naked mole rat. And they have an enzyme that replaces prevents them from aging yeah it pre- it, it replaces, replaces the tips of the chromosomes is it telomerase yeah, yeah. Uh, uh no telomerase okay. oh yeah yeah telomerase that's right uh and that's that's also in cancer mm-hmm. too yeah, yeah. well so the problem fun. with that is it causes cancer somehow mm-hmm. naked yeah. rats are like immune immune to, to cancer. cancer but um, yeah like like we tried to use that in humans to like stop aging or like reverse aging yeah. or slow it down. Basically, all but it the is, problem is, is the only way it appears naturally in the human body is like in cancer, mm. pretty much. I mean, it well, might appear it's... in like other instances, but not like well, hardly. And that's why cancer can divide forever because mm. well, it's like basically immortal. Yeah, what? the reason it causes cancer is because cancer is just a mistake in when it copies the DNA. So if it, it keeps repeating repeatedly copying the tips of the chromosomes it's going to eventually make an error because the longer it goes on the more errors it's going to make so it'll develop Is, a isn't cancer. there like a it's telomeres right the telomeres yeah, the telomeres yeah. at the end of the there's like a law about that as in they like multiply. physics and this uh, murphy's law anything that can happen will happen yeah anything that can happen will happen this molecule that that the naked roll mat uh, produces, like it makes so the telomeres don't deteriorate like they do in yeah, a human. And that's pretty much them. what getting old is, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that's basically what it is. It's like yeah, your, your cells not being able to repair the chromosomes, so you can't yeah like further your living because so your cells start to die and yeah. you age. The tips of the chromosomes have like they have information there, but it's not really that important. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of goes down, and the older you get, the as the chromosomes begin to things. unravel, like telomerase, like like takes the chromosomes that began to unravel, and it like smushes them back together. <laughs> I don't know how to say, it. like it re-ravels them. Yeah. If if we can use that term. Yeah. Something like that. So let's get back to uh, the question at hand, which is, With, what about Dolly? No. Can no, we but, clone? Uh, um, animals that have gone extinct. See, I think we mentioned I was, that physically was actually... or physically. Physically, yeah. Physically, it depends. Well, we how... physically, the half life of DNA is 512 years. Mm-hmm. So, recently extinct animals like the thylacine or the passenger pigeon or stuff like that, if we have intact specimens, like we have a baby, like Tasmanian tiger in a jar of alcohol, yeah. stuff like that, we can take their DNA and if we can find a living relative as a surrogate then we could potentially clone them mm-hmm. but like stuff like like dinosaurs 65 million years old that's out of the question because there's no dna left after 1.5 million years yeah. around and even stuff like the mammoth which if we find like a perfectly preserved 40,000 year old mammoth in permafrost half life of dna is 512 years so well, some frozen. of that DNA is gonna mm-hmm. like a is gonna be gone. We have to fill it in. So we need to like, yeah, we have to put the bits and pieces together using like elephants and like mm-hmm. other mammoth specimens, and like we have to basically like put puzzle pieces together to get the genome. Yeah. See, there's there's so, it's, so it's, if we were wanted really to hard. clone a dinosaur, you'd either have to reverse like uh, uh, one of the ancestors, like a chicken, re- reverse its evolution back. Or you'd have to take a fossil of that and try to see the fossil of the DNA and try to put it together like using a map and synthesizing it almost. Or... Okay, that does have to do with what I was talking to Paul about last night. (laughs) That actually, that that leads right into what I was saying. And like, about my, my theory. That's not really a theory, it's more a hypothesis because there's no evidence behind it and I have absolutely no clue what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Should, like, do you want to keep going? Or no, I... no, go ahead. Okay, so you and I got in that argument, and you were all about how, like, 
the movie, despite, like, we found out velociraptors have feathers, just like all other theropods, and, like, uh, velociraptors were actually two feet tall, and you were all against it because they weren't scientifically accurate. I, on the other hand, was more, like, lenient because I'm, like, ex-fiction and <laughs> all that, but whatever, we got in that argument, that debate, and it got me thinking about it, and then I went to go see the movie, and in the movie... How was it? They actually... It was good. It was actually really good. It wasn't as good as the first one, obviously. Well, yeah, but you can't compare to it, the first one. It was, I think, better than the sequel and the third one. It was actually, it was good. I have to go see but, that. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Okay, this isn't this isn't gonna be a spoiler. Okay. Uh, but uh, in the movie, Doctor Wu, who, like appeared in the first movie, he was like a geneticist. Yeah. He gives an explanation for why they don't look like actual dinosaurs like they don't have feathers and like the velociraptor super huge and stuff because he said hold on i have a, I have a script here oh you have the script yes he said if they were made to be realistic they'd look a lot different than they do now and they were engineered to look bigger scarier and meaner so they basically designed the, the dinosaurs like mm-hmm. keyword designed to be what the public look like so they they never had the full genome to begin with so they took the genome and they edited it, so they basically kind of made their own genome for yeah. their own creature. So, uh, they manufactured the traits, and that got me thinking. We have the human genome fully sequenced, and we have, like, almost full sequencing for other animals, like rats and chickens and stuff. Mm-hmm. And currently, we're examining all the genes on the genome to find out what they do. And what if, in the future, yeah. we find genes of all these animals, and we know what they do, and then we take genes from these animals we and we humans. combine them all into one large genome like we make our own animal like the and average of again. every creature on earth well no yeah kind of but like like we just we take we like mix and match genes mm-hmm. different animals right. create species like they do with so the it's like taking the best, best of everything and putting it into one animal which i think sounds like a terrible terrible idea <laughs> that sounds like a great thank idea. you john fall but <laughs> but think about but okay, I mean, so, reproductive I mean, systems how would how would it well it probably would well, we have work, glowing cats it... i know it probably wouldn't work but just just theoretically like we make our own genome mm-hmm. right and then so so dinosaurs thinking about dinosaurs we obviously can't clone dinosaurs because there's no dna left after they've been dead for 1.5 million years even in the best of conditions but yeah. so we we have dinosaur fossils so we understand dinosaur anatomy and physiology like their bones and stuff yeah and then I, you probably heard about this study i think you did they accidentally broke a t-rex femur and they looked inside it and they were amazed because they found oh, soft yeah, the, tissue, the tissue that yeah. had been preserved so they're examining that and there's still no dna obviously because it's been mm. gone but what did survive were most of the animal's proteins so we know what proteins yeah. the T-Rex used and what a couple other dinosaurs used. So if we could find genes that code for their proteins mm-hmm. and then we have their like anatomy. So we like find genes that code for bones that look like that. And then we just kind of fill in the blanks. We could kind of make a creature that like the wolfhound looks like a dinosaur, <laughs> acts like a dinosaur, but isn't actually a dinosaur. Yeah. And then we could study it in the real world to like give us a better understanding of the creatures that walked before us 65 million years ago. Yeah. Okay. So th- um, that's a- couldn't we technically do that? Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's talk Pro- about. You, you technically um... could. Well, uh, we obviously have no clue we're talking. About yeah. Because the, well, the problem, the problem with that, <laughs> wouldn't be the science of it. It'd be the politics of it, because that's like yeah. physically taking it and mushing it together, and you'd get people saying it's uh, you're. Being it's like Dr. Frankenstein's Frankenstein, creature. yeah. So physically, it would well, like, be possible. So th- but there's a problem with that, you though. You would have issues, Timmy. So there's there's a problem with like what I said, though. In addition to like me probably just being an idealist and like making <laughs> no sense, that uh, so you know when we clone animals, you two both know mm. this. We take another animal and we implant an egg cell in it. And that animal acts as a surrogate, and it gives birth to the new animal. So that's why, like, when they're talking about cloning the mammoth, 
they need a similar creature to act as a surrogate to give birth to that animal. So they're going to use like an African or Asian elephant Unless if they ever get Unless we figured out um, and we sequenced the genome and figured out what the um, womb would look like in a mm-hmm. in a other ma- in a female mammoth, and then just created that, which mm-hmm. I think would work much better if we could even do that. You know. Yeah. Here's another That's thing. Just a- um, instead of actually preserving the tissues of uh, animals to possibly clone in the future, why not just sequence the gene and store it as data? Because data uh, doesn't deteriorate at how uh, because it's like really hard would. and really, really, really hard to take a bunch of numbers and then make a DNA sequence that goes from the Earth to the Moon as well, small as molecules. Well, to be fair, John Paul, they did design bacteria. They, like, made synthetic cells mm-hmm. that were basically... They took as little DNA as they could and made, like, a cell with its own genome, so they kind of made a new species of bacteria mm-hmm. that's, like, basically, like, fake bacteria because yeah. they made it. It's artificial. But, like, we can make a tiny sequence, so I think in the future we'll be able to make a larger one, like a much larger one. Yeah. Because progress. Not without a lot of um, mutations. Uh, Another thing, though, with progress, like, if you look back, a lot of, like, the major scientific expanses happened in, like, the 50s or the 60s because we wanted to be the best to beat the Soviet Union. I wanna be the very best. best. <laughs> but, like, uh, the reason we went to the moon is just so we could beat the Soviets. Just so we could rub, yeah, rub the dirty commie faces mm-hmm. in it. Like, mm-hmm. so war drives progress in a twisted way. But... That's really sad. Yeah. So, think about it. Mm-hmm. But like, so scientific progress isn't linear or exponential. It's it goes in bursts when we need it. Mm-hmm. So unless like it, it's it's very possible if they find out that they could possibly weaponize genetics, like maybe uh, viral warfare or something, then will get huge breakthroughs in it, but individual research probably won't yield too much. So what what created the spike in technology in our day and age in the last 15 years? Well, that's another thing. Like, the iPhones and things like that, they were driven by uh, the consumer. It's like war... So it's almost like a different kind of war. Yeah, or... Uh, or uh, money so you have all the all these new bluetooth and all this wireless stuff 3d printers that's all becoming huge in like a consumer market and that's why people are building all these things i think if we um work from technology to capitalism um that will happen again. Mm-hmm. I really do. Like, I think if we start using cloning, people, when we get really good at it, it's gonna become like the iPhone. Yeah. And everybody's gonna be using it. And. Like, everyone's gonna have their own little pet baby mammoth. And is that ethical? Well, it's already sort when people... of here because. Yeah. Is it, what happens is it when ethical to, like, make creatures just humans? to have as pets? What? Like,. That we kind of do that with dogs, but mm. that's kind of separate. But Why well, is it separate? there are there are people that it's extremely expensive, but it could get cheaper in the future. That it always gets cheaper. Yeah. Remember, three D uh, printers. There are people that will pay. Three D printers money. used to be thousand upon thousand dollars, and you can get one for like. Yeah, and then we bucks. have we have Dante who built one. Now Dante, yeah, Dante is a three D printer. But when we start messing with life. We we start um, buying and selling life, right? Mm. Really, well, we already do that. But it's well, also we like we used to buy and sell slaves, and that's not yeah. ethical. 
So are we going to come full circle and start buying and selling humans again? Or are we going to just be... It like, would designer babies? Like it would be... Start, like, it would be like, oh, clones aren't really people. They shouldn't have the same rights as us. Or, oh, those... Or they're just... Or, like, if you have people that are rich enough that over. they could, like... And that's like, uh, enhance their genetics. They'll be like, oh, those people aren't enhanced or anything. They're worse than us. They shouldn't deserve the same rights as us. And but that's that's kind of separate from cloning. That's more like genetic engineering. Um, at this point, I don't understand why we need to be cloning animals. I don't know why we need to do that. I think we should focus on cloning plants mm -hmm. because, um, in my mind. The ultimate goal for humanity is to escape this planet and go somewhere else and cultivate yeah. a different planet. So Get off get this hell hell out of this bro. place. And man, quit. Earth is so bad. Ah, oh, man. No, it's a great place, but it, I think if well, we want to survive for a really long time, if we think about the big picture mm -hmm. and think about it on the long-term scale, yeah, I really I think, think we should move on to interstellar. Eventually. Well, I think this is more into genetic engineering rather than cloning, but if we could engineer ourselves to live so much longer, we can accomplish so much more because, like, let's say you have someone who's complete, like, brilliant, but, and they have all this research, but then they die, that's where that ends. And then you have other people who have to try to catch up rather than just continue where, left, where the person left off. How far can you push your Yeah, person? like, there's only gonna be- there's only one Einstein. Mm -hmm. And there's only one Stephen Hawking, and they make- like, individual people make great advances, and then other people use their advances to collect research, so like, the next great people can come along and make another huge advancement. Yeah. Is, is that like a pattern you guys see? I yeah. think- Because it's always like, the, like, one dude who like, makes a super huge city, or like one- I'm not- I'm not like, being discriminative by just saying dude, like, by dude I mean like, man or woman. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. not like, like anyone like a human makes, being. it's just one person yeah. most of the time, or like a small group. Yeah, just like one bruh or bruh. Just, <laughs> either. <laughs> you just gotta say it so that it's, you can't tell the gender, like, bruh, did you say bro or bra? Yeah, bruh. So we've been going for 27 and a half minutes. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, so... We, we never got to the problems with dinosaurs and, like, they're not being a creature, like, near enough to, like, mm. have a surrogate for them. And, like, art we were going to talk about Arthur and stuff, but I think... Do you guys think this is a good point to end it? Yeah. Yeah. We could right. even... We could throw All in right, a part this is the Universe Effect signing off, I guess. I'm JP. Yeah. I'm Timmy. I'm Shane. Or Otto. Or whatever. I'm also Shane. Not really. Sort of. <laughs>